the devil's probably saying, what can I do to get you to give up, cave in and quit? What kind of trial can I take you through to get you to give up, cave in and quit? What, what, what is it that I can allow or, or cause to happen in your life? Uh, who can I get to talk about you and slander you to get you to give up, cave in and quit? Uh, how many times can I challenge your finances so that you go into panic so you can give up, cave in and quit? The Bible says there's a due season that comes if you don't give up, if you don't cave in and if you don't quit. Where's the music? recognize that I was triggered because I am displaying some areas of um, character flaws that need to grow you know so like it is what it is and um, and so it was really good to like read that and then go into Pastor Daughter's emotional because ultimately one thing that is true is that we are under grace and it's not grace because we have um, been trying really really hard to be good it's grace because God still so loved the world and so um, for me that's an important um, truth to always remind myself of especially when I am so constantly reminding myself of how I feel in my flesh so um, I was just like so appreciative again of the word this morning and the devotional and just that simple like the reason this works is because what we're reading is this letter 
letter of instruction from the Lord on what we can do to live our best lives right now. And then my second really great takeaway from um, this morning's devotional with Creflo was that consistency is key and it's it's key in all areas of our life it's not just in the areas of business or um finance you know like we all want to like i shouldn't say that many of us want to be successful many of us want to um have security through our financial income many of us um want to feel like we are making a difference in the world but many of us also quit before we see our victory and so why is that well one thing is is that we lack consistency we don't consistently follow through on the plan of action that we've set for ourselves that we believe will bring us to our goal if you're in sales it is so important to know it's a numbers game and that what you really have to do is um, decide for yourself how many number like how much you're going to do for the day so if i'm trying to build a business through like network marketing for say for instance we had some daily goals. Five new contacts a day. Five new contacts a day is 25 contacts in a business week. 25 contacts in a business week times four weeks is 100 new contacts a month. If you are reaching out to 100 new people every single month, you will start off with maybe 99 no's and one yes in a month. But if you consistently practice what you're doing and what you're saying to those people, then what you can expect is that your 99 no's will slowly turn into 80 no's and then 70 no's. And you might even get so good as to end up with um, 20 no's or less and in a short period of time. One of my mentors, Mark Lalonde, he says that the best way to become successful is to fail quickly. And so he goes after when he's pursuing a goal in sales or a, yeah, when he's pursuing a goal in sales, this, this man will average 400 contacts a day, okay? 400 a day you know how many nodes he probably gets and then <laughs> and then I can speak from my experience observing him he can easily get 50 yeses in weeks like two weeks in less than a month he he's 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 pretty intense he gets what he wants whatever it is and he gets it quickly because he just goes at it full throttle non-stop like a madman and so he's consistent and pastor um, dollar talks about how consistent the lord is through the word um, that i'm going to share and so i just think that it's really important for um for us to take a step back and look at ourselves and all the different things that we want. Like, if we want to lose weight, are we consistently practicing eating healthy and exercising? If we want to have better relationships with people, are we consistently pursuing um, positive interactions with people? Like, whether it's sending out a card, you know, um, a physical just, you know, just to say hello card to friends or shooting them an email or sending them a text and not asking for anything like literally just saying, hey, oh, I forgot to get gas. Um, oh, well, um, traffic was nuts. I was like, no, <laughs> I guess I was subconsciously like, no. But anyway, so I just think that um, when we think about 
what ways consistency can improve our lives and make it more purposeful. Like every single thing, if we want to um, learn a new skill, are we consistently practicing that? Or are, if we want to just um, become, feel like, feel like we're more knowledgeable and just more cultured are we reading more books and reading books about other cultures if we like it doesn't even matter what it is if you want to get your driver's license like you need to consistently practice driving like there's no there is no area in our life where consistency isn't key to success and I think honestly we just take that for granted because um when we think of being consistent, we think of it with things that are super challenging all the time. Like when you're dieting or like, for example, losing weight, people will equate consistency with working out and, and exercise, um, working out and eating healthy. And that's true, but they do it to an extreme where it's not manageable. Like consistently exercising could begin with something as simple as parking further away from the entrance to the store that you're going to. It could mean actually going for a walk to the store if it's in your neighborhood versus driving because, you know, it's better for the environment. You know, you can help out the planet in, in the future, but also you can help your own health. Um, if your goal is to um, eat healthier, like, consistently just drinking a little bit more water every day is a great start consistently um, choosing smaller portions is a great start you don't have to make this big dramatic like I'm not gonna eat carbs I'm not gonna like I get it of course we all get all the information about how important so many like dramatic drastic changes are but are they manageable and will you be consistent with them do you know that if you start small and stay consistent you will notice over time that you have achieved great things and you're making much bigger steps than you'd ever planned on making in the beginning I mean that's just the way it goes and so I really appreciated that with this morning's um, text like just being reminded that one, our father is so consistent, and one thing that that outshines everything is his love. His love for us is so consistent that he has done, so. like read the Bible from the Old Testament through the New Testament, you will see so many stories of how God loved the people, and in human terminology, we let him down. And there was in a lot of in the old testament there's a lot of like consequences and then forgiveness and then lots and lots of like um like gifts and rewards or um you know blessings and then we let them down again and then you know there's consequences and so it's this cycle and so i think that that cycle shows us that god consistently loves us no matter what we do and then the, in the new testament then we see grace you know grace and flesh which is jesus and how much he loved and how he died for us and that is like the epitome of showing constant love and consistent love like you a person dies for you they're not they can't die for you too many times, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you you get a chance to live every day, but you die only once, right? So, um, Jesus did that for us, and as a result, we are forgiven. It's not like we have to seek forgiveness every day. Like, we are forgiven. We accept him. We accept what he's done for us on the cross. We um, ask him to be the Lord of our lives, and it's done. His death covers our sins. Each day, I think what we need to work on is forgiving ourselves for our sins and then being consistent to live out this feeling that we have inside of us, the feeling that makes us feel triggered when we're not doing what we should be doing. So I just think like, wow, you know, there's just so, you know, it was really great to um, be in the word this morning. I've been in the word for a minute, so I'm not trying to sound like, oh, I haven't been there, but um, it's really great to to see that lesson because I think for me, 
that is an area that I've been struggling in. Like I want things and I start them and then I get a little distracted by something shiny. And But I always kind of go back, but I would like to be more consistent on the path that I'm choosing for right now and just see it all the way through. And I can um, acknowledge one thing that I think is um, very true for me that Pastor Dollar shared this morning. Like we can, we need to know if we're doing it for ourselves or for the Lord. And I do believe that like some people can do things for themselves and um, feel like they're doing it for the Lord as well. And some people can do things for themselves and then discover a new found passion to serve the Lord. I think that my makeup is that I need to be doing it for the Lord for me to feel anything passionate about it um and when I'm not then I just kind of am going through the motions which is part of the reason why I'm not consistent because I do believe that the Lord gives us the desires of our heart and that he gives us the will to do and to act and it's for his good pleasure and so when I'm not doing things for his good pleasure then I think that is where I just feel like, eh, you know, I don't know, maybe kind of could, should, I don't know, you know, kind of a thing, like really apathetic about it versus when I'm doing something and I'm so excited and I'm just focused on like, I can do this to glorify the Lord or I believe this happens a lot. I'll believe that the Lord has put me in this position to do this for his purpose and his glory. Then I'm passionate about it and I just get it done enthusiastically. And so um, I think that is something that I have been struggling with as well. And I think because of that, my consistency has been failing. So I'm excited to continue to dig a little deeper into this, um, to continue to kind of like wrestle this out with the Lord and figure out like, um, why am I not giving more of it over to him and allowing him to lead me? and then asking him for that and um and i and like and 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 more importantly than even that why like i just know that i need to um focus more on his grace than my shortcomings because all have failed and fall short of the glory of god and there is nothing that i can do to be good enough so knowing and accepting that i should be able to take my focus off of myself and just put it more on how can I serve others? How can I bless others? What can I do to um, show them love, you know, agape love, and then allow God to just work out everything else because that's what he does. So that is really where my heart's passion is at. I'm not sure yet, you know, like what, um, you know, what a one plus one equals two is going to be, but I figured one way to, excuse me, start figuring out a little bit is to just share my devotionals. And so that's my goal. Um, I talked about it, got my computer back today. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And so I'm going to um, get this uploaded and edited and printed and uh, or posted. And, um, and then we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, hopefully... You know, God is just going to show me what it is that he wants me to do, how he wants me to do it. And um, and we will use what I've got going on to do that because that's also what he does. All right, friends, I'm going to go. I had to go um, I had to share the video from Creflo so you guys know what I'm talking about. Probably mixed it in if I edited this well. <laughs> and... Um, Thanks for stopping by. Much aloha. Have a great day. You know, I believe there is power in consistency. I believe that there's a powerful thing that happens in what we've been consistently doing. I believe that there's no way you can operate in consistency and not see results in your life. I want to take these four scriptures, if you can get them, and I want to show you what the Bible has to say about consistency. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58, and I'll read all of these in the, the ESV uh, translation. Here's what he said. Therefore, my brother and my beloved brothers, be steadfast. Wow. You can see consistency there. Be immovable. 
you can see consistency there always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that in the lord your labor is not in vain and so when he talks about in first corinthians 15 58 when he talks about being steadfast and unmovable always abounding that's consistency and and notice the result of that he says you know it's not going to be in vain when you spend time consistently with God, when you spend time consistently in the word, when you spend time consistently making confessions, when you spend time consistently doing what you do and it is of the word of God, he says it's not in vain. So some of you ought to be expecting some amazing things to happen. Amen. Now look at Galatians chapter six and verse nine. Galatians chapter six and verse nine. He says, and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. So uh, due season, uh, it's not the question whether or not a due season, it, it, you know, if it's gonna come, it's not if, but when. It's not if due season is gonna come, but when. And he says, don't get weary in doing well. But, you know, what we do here in the mornings, that's 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 doing well. He says, don't get weary in that. And so you, you can see that the enemy is going to try to disrupt your consistency. Somehow he wants you to get weary in doing what you do. But don't don't get weary, he says. And let us not grow weary of doing good. Don't get weary. He says in due season. Now, due season always comes. It's not if it comes, but when it comes. Due season always comes, okay? And uh, and and he says it'll it'll you'll benefit from the due season if you don't give up, cave in, and quit. You know that may be the top temptation of the devil. What in, the devil's probably saying? What can I do to get you to give up, cave in, and quit? What kind of trial can I take you through to get you to give up, cave in, and quit? What, what, what is it that I can allow or, or cause to happen in your life? Uh, who can I get to talk about you and slander you to get you to give up, cave in and quit? Uh, I, how many times can I challenge your finances so that you go into panic so you can give up, cave in and quit? The Bible says there's a due season that comes if you don't give up, if you don't cave in and if you don't quit. I notice this scripture in Daniel chapter six and 10. Daniel chapter six and 10, you, you see the authority and the power that Daniel operated in. But notice why. Verse 10 says this. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Do you see the commitment to remain consistent? Consistent people understand that breakthrough always comes. And I believe that consistency is the key to the breakthrough. It's not, you know, what you do is important, but how long and how, how, how long you're willing to do it. I don't know. People get real spiritually dumb deep when they've done something for a matter of time. And if they don't see exactly what they want to see, they're ready to give up, cave in and quit. I understand there's some cases like maybe starting a ministry and then three and a half years at the most four years, nothing's really happened. But I still think there's a time where you, you know, let the. time where you, you know, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you and confirm. That's why it's important to get a revelation of a thing so that when um, you're in stalk time and it seems like nothing's ever going to come to pass in stalk time, you make your mind up that my consistency will be the key to the breakthrough. How's your consistency where your relationship with God is concerned? How's your consistency where your study time and the word is concerned? Are you waiting for, you know, me or Taffy to come and spoon feed you or 
or have you decided, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm going to continue to mature and to grow up. And when I join for those confessions, man, I've already been fed. I'm not dependent on you to do what I need to be doing myself between me and the Lord. Your consistency will be the key to your breakthrough. And then finally, this scripture in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and uh, 8, Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Isn't it awesome that we have a God who is dis who's consistent? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's consistent. He's consistent. And, you know, I, I just believe that the things of God uh require us to make up in our minds that i'm not gonna always quit i'm not gonna always be up and down and up and down there are some things that we need to just you know do and be consistent it it, it shouldn't require you to get a pat on the back for for just you know being consistent somebody says well i have a hard time with that well go to god and say god help me to be help me to be consistent help me to just be focused in on doing what I know I should do and what I need to be doing for the present time. Uh, a lot of times people want to be successful in business, but they don't understand what it really takes to be successful in anything. You just want to start for and go for a couple of weeks. And if it don't work, you're ready to quit. Or you, you want, you want to, to, to get deeper understanding and have a, a relationship with God and, 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 and nothing just happens like, you know, voila. Uh, a lot of times people think they have successful things. They just really have a hobby because they're just not willing to hang in there and to do it long enough for something to happen. And so I want to encourage you today, man. I want to encourage you to really evaluate your life of consistency and allow consistency to be the breakthrough in your life. You know, it's not what you do one time. That's the key to the breakthrough. It's what you're willing to do consistency and consist consistently. And, uh, you know, you always got these folks, Oh, I want to go in the weight room and, and, uh, I don't want to get too much muscle. I just want to get cut up. Well, you ain't going to get none of them because it requires consistency to get either one of those. You're going to have to, you know, be consistent. It's not getting on the treadmill one time and thinking you're going to lose weight. It's just what you're willing to do on a consistent level that will eventually bring the breakthrough into your life. I pray that blessed you today. Have an amazing. Thank you for watching or listening. I hope this content has helped you in any way, maybe motivated or inspired you. Maybe it's triggered an idea. Maybe it's gotten you out of a rut. Maybe it simply entertained you. Listen, I'm just a mom and wife who lost her way in the process of taking care of everyone around her, ending up overweight, depressed, and lonely. From rock bottom, I rediscovered myself, a new passion for life, and a purpose outside of my comfort zone. I shifted into running my own business and I've never looked back. If you want to follow me on my journey or connect further, you can either go to my blog at dionigoosby.com that's dianigoosby.com or click the link in the description. Aloha for now, my friends.